Welcome to Virtual Medica 2020 and this webinar about uh, Germany's healthcare market. My name is Marcus Schmidt and I'm with Germany Trade and Invest. A um, few housekeeping items before we get started. Um, this session is being recorded so you can view it um, afterwards on demand. Um, also, frequent question um, that we always receive, will the slides be made available? Yes. I'm not sure it will be made available through Medica, but um, if you would like the slides, you can certainly email me. We will also upload the presentations um, on our website, and I'm going to give you the details uh, a little later on. Um, the chat function, I believe, is disabled, but um, uh, you're very welcome to uh, post questions, and I'll try to answer the questions um, at the end. We have about half an hour time um, and hopefully I'll be through the presentation a little ahead of time. Um, quick sentence about us. Germany Trade Invest is the economic development agency uh, of Germany. I'm not gonna go through all the details of what we do. There's a lot we do. We have staff of more than 400 people. Um, what my healthcare team and I do, uh, we help international companies set up operations um, in Germany that would fall into the second column here uh, under investor consulting. And uh, I can go into more detail for our services uh, also at the end. If you attended uh, some of our previous um, webinars, you might have seen a slide similar to this one. We've updated the numbers. Uh, those are our numbers for 2019, the latest numbers available. Um, and then usually we take it from there and go into all the various uh, sub-segments, product categories, uh, look you know, what's, what's trending, what's growing, um, also talk about the uh, insurance market and hospitals uh, and so forth. However, in the last couple of days, I've received a lot of questions regarding uh, Corona and how Germany is affected and how, what effects it has on the um, German healthcare market. So um, I actually sat down over the weekend and changed my uh, entire slide deck. Uh, so now I basically have two parts to my presentation. The first part will be uh, some numbers regarding uh, the Corona pandemic uh, and the effects that it has on Germany. And then in the second part, I'm going to uh, talk about um, how it affects the healthcare market specifically, uh, what big changes we've seen, not only related to Corona, but of course there were some other regular changes as well. Now, if you're joining us from outside of Europe, um, uh, you may or may not know that uh, the numbers are currently increasing across the board, all across Europe. Uh, we see some, some, some dramatic numbers in some places. Um, many countries are uh, trying to deal uh, with the pandemic and, and rising infection numbers. Now, Germany is maybe not on top, but nevertheless, uh, of course, it's a major concern uh, and a big issue that needs to be addressed and dealt with. Um, we're uh, right in the middle of a second wave, as you can see here. Those are the number of active cases we've seen in the first wave uh, around uh, peak, um, around uh, early April. Uh, second wave, uh, much taller in terms of infection numbers, but of course, testing is... Um, uh, was expanded um, in the meantime too. So you can't compare the numbers exactly, but you can also see that the second wave, we're not on a downward trend at all. I'm not sure if we reached the peak, um, hopefully we have, but uh, it's anything from sure, certain. And the German government will actually discuss additional measures uh, today um, to get those numbers um, to decrease again. Number of fatalities, uh, again, you see the first wave uh, around uh, March, April, May. Um, we also see the number of fatalities increase uh, now in the fall again. Uh, luckily not to the same extent uh, as we've seen in the, um, in the spring, given the much higher infection numbers. Um, but as I mentioned before, uh, you know, with the testing capacities, um, that's kind of hard uh, to pinpoint. Um, and it's certainly a major concern, no doubt about it. Um, there have been about 12,000 deaths recording uh, in Germany this year. Um, Germany, as most other countries, counts um, all fatalities. Uh, so um, uh, where Corona uh, or COVID-19 was detected. So it doesn't have to be the primary cause of death, um, but um, yeah, we can see an infection. Um, Germany was maybe not as hard hit as uh, some other 
uh, countries in Europe and uh, the Americas, as you can see on the left-hand side, uh, those are the number of fatalities per 1 million inhabitants. Um, then again, there are many countries in Asia and elsewhere that uh, done much better. Um, so maybe Germany stands somewhere in the middle. Um, here's a chart that shows um, the fatalities by week, uh, the regular numbers uh, that were recorded in the past, 2016 through 2019, that would be the blue shaded area, uh, the average, uh, those, the blue line and um, how those numbers compare to this year. You see, it's not entirely out of line. Um, the um, fatality rate was higher uh, when we saw the first peak of infections in the springtime. However, there was also another peak around week 34 or so uh, that was certainly not related to COVID-19. Uh, so it's roughly on par, but but not much, much higher. Um, I'm not exactly sure how this looks in other countries. Um, this is, this is, these are the fatalities by age group. Um, you see people under the age of 40 count for less than 0.5%. Uh, um, and about 86% of the fatalities uh, were people aged 70 and older. Um, of course, it's not simply age related, but uh, if you have preconditions, multiple conditions, uh, you have a much, much higher risk. Um, so obviously a lot has to be done to protect um, elderly people or higher age groups. Um, maybe we'll see a decision today that uh, complementary masks will, um, medical great medical mask will be handed out uh, to everyone age 65 and older. Um, also, um, um, there's a lot of efforts to keep infections out of um, retirement homes, um, uh, hospitals and so forth um, by rigorous testing um, and so forth. But those last, last two charts, charts maybe also the reason why um, some people uh, think you know, they're not at risk uh, or not affected and uh, do not agree with all the measures that are taken to, to uh, curb the, the, the pandemic. However, that picture can, of course, very quickly change once um, hospital capacities would be exhausted. Now, Germany has been criticized or the healthcare system for being a little inefficient in the last couple of years uh, because there's a great number of hospital beds, uh, almost 500,000 hospital beds, more than 1,900 uh, hospitals. In a situation like this, uh, of course, it comes in handy. You see uh, the number of acute care beds is relatively high in international comparison. Same is true for intensive care beds, um, where Germany uh, ranks among the highest internationally. Um, but of course, you know, facilities and equipment, respirators and so forth, um, that's one part, but um, uh, the uh, main concern, and I'll address this uh, on the next slide, um, is, um, is personnel uh, and staff. This is just the utilization rate to, to, to sum this up. Um, uh, for, for ICU beds, uh, you see that 77% are currently in use, 23 are um, available. Um, now, this does not include some emergency facilities that have been set up in the meantime and could be activated. Um, also, we'll probably see, similar to the springtime, in a slightly different fashion, that the uh, government will ask hospitals to postpone scheduled procedures uh, that are not critical to free up as many beds as, as possible. And then hospitals will be compensated uh, to keep free capacities. Um, again, what I mentioned before is staff. That's probably the bigger, bigger concern uh, compared to, to, to equipment. Um, now, Germany is not on the low end when, it's, when it comes to the uh, number of doctors and, and nurses, but I don't think any of the countries uh, here on this chart uh, would claim that they have plenty of doctors and nurses, and certainly not in a situation like this, uh, the major pandemic going on. With that, I would like to um, move on to the second part. Uh, what major... Um, changes we've seen in the healthcare market, uh, what's new uh, in terms of regulatory, um, but um, also some of the lessons and uh, effects we've seen from this, what I would like to call the corona uh, stress test. 
And I would like to start with the digitization. Um, the Digital Care Act, of course, is not entirely new. It was already launched, but uh, you know many of these changes came into effect this year. I'm not going to go through all the details of the Digital Care Act. We simply would not have the time, but I want to point out a few highlights. And one would clearly be uh, the medical apps that now can be prescribed by doctors and will be reimbursed um, by health insurance companies. So we're not talking about uh, you know those uh, apps we've typically seen so far uh, aimed at a mass consumer market where you maybe record something. Um, but these are apps uh, with a proven medical value that are prescribed, um, not just available in an app store, uh, and then uh, reimbursed um, more in a scale of, let's say, 500 euros rather than five euros uh, that you would see for a consumer app. Um, there's a fast track program to bring these apps into market. Um, five, as far as I know, five medical apps have been approved and are in the market, and there's about another 20 currently going through the process. Now, I'm not sure if uh, there's any other country where you see um, this possibility of prescribing medical apps. Um, there may be. Uh, if you're aware of any, please let me know. Send me an email. I'd be happy to hear about it. Um, but that's really something novel, uh, which is quite exciting uh, for many innovative uh, young companies with great solutions. The other area I would like to point out real quick, and this, of course, was also launched uh, long before um, uh, the corona pandemic hit, uh, was teleconsultations of but you know, it didn't have a whole lot of tractions. People or patients like to go to the regular doctor, to their general physician. Um, but once um, we did have the pandemic, um, of course, uh, it was great to have these tools. And we've seen uh, tremendous growth rates uh, in the space that people can consult doctors uh, online and uh, can receive um, also prescriptions and so forth. Um, I think uh, you know what the, the, the big changes through the pandemic, uh, doctors as well as patients were rather skeptical beforehand. So the great benefits um, of these uh, new tools um, and have um, adopted this uh, on a much wider range. And uh, so I think it's gonna be here to stay and will be used much more. So maybe just those uh, two highlights real quick. Um, there will be another webinar by one of my colleagues about the Digital Care Act uh, later today, actually at 11.20, and I'll give you that detail in a little bit as well. Now, um, the other point is the, um, the effects that we see from the, as I called it, corona stress test. Uh, there are multiple programs that were launched. This is just one incentive program by the federal government. Uh, these numbers that you see do not even include uh, the matching um, or the add-ons uh, from, from state budgets. Um, also, this does not include uh, compensation um, for hospitals that I mentioned earlier to free up uh, capacity. Uh, I think the federal government spent another $9 billion um, uh, for that uh, in the spring alone. So you see uh, some of the infrastructure, uh, health, public health, for example, receives a lot of funds. Uh, hospitals are being modernized, especially digital infrastructure. And a lot of money is um, being put into um, local development and production of medicine, medical supplies, vaccines, and personal protective equipment. And I think if you look through these programs, you kind of see what the uh, government is aiming at and, and trying to achieve. So um, as I mentioned, healthcare infrastructure uh, with a stress test, you know, shortcomings just become so much more obvious. Um, I think if you're trying to stay on top of a pandemic, it's uh, difficult if your main communication tool is a fax machine to give a very simple example. So, um, of course, you know, digitalization is a huge uh, topic and both public health departments and hospitals um, are supposed to upgrade the infrastructure so that communication and data sharing uh, just works much quicker, easier, more flawless. Um, 
And then, of course, uh, there was a focus on uh, certain supply chains, global supply chains, and the risk that may be involved. Now, Germany does believe in global trade. Germany is a major exporter of medical devices. I think two-thirds of products that are made in Germany uh, go into exports. Germany is also a major importer of uh, medical goods, and that will continue uh, to be uh, the same. Um, you know, as long as medical products meet uh, quality standards and are cost efficient, uh, they will continue to be imported just they have in the past. Um, the only concern is with products where you only have one or very few suppliers or are dependent on uh, one uh, source country. Um, as we've seen the, with the pandemic, if there's a global rise in demand, but of course there could be other uh, events, let's say uh, natural disasters or trade disputes or even military conflicts uh, that could disrupt these supply chains. So uh, that needs to be uh, looked at and addressed. Now the way the German, uh, the German government is trying to address this is not by um, demanding that certain production is being done domestically, also not by uh, you know, agreeing to certain prices or by paying a premium to any products that are made in Germany. That's not the case, but really uh, what they're looking at is, is in trying to incentivize um, innovation um, of uh, novel products, better products, you know, whether it be performance or, or, or uh, comfort and so forth. Um, and also production technology. Uh, so just to give another very simple example of the face masks that um, mentioned earlier, of course, you know, immediate demand had to be met, but really the longer term strategy is uh, to help companies develop products that, that are not only superior, but, but um, that are produced in such an efficient way that they can also be produced uh, in Germany or other European countries. Um, so that you may not be deeply dependent um, on just one source country. Uh, so it's a mix of products. It's just mitigating risk. Yeah, so far we uh, have about a good 10 minutes left, um, I believe. So I would like to um, just point out quickly some of the webinars that will go into much more detail. Um, I could only scratch on the surface, of course, uh, with this very, very quick overview. So uh, again, at 11.20 today, my colleague uh, Julia Peach will be talking about Germany's Digital Care Act and the regulatory changes and the fast track program that I quickly mentioned for the medical apps. Um, and also then this afternoon, uh, Gabriel Fleming will talk much more about regulatory um, and um, uh, for medical devices. Um, he also have a guest speaker uh, from a medical technology company um, who will share his hands-on experience with moving into the German market. Um, on Wednesday, we'll have three more sessions. Uh, Dr. Gregor Kempo will uh, give an overview of Germany's IBD and analytics market. And he'll also be joined by a guest speaker as will uh, be Julia Albrecht, uh, who will introduce the medical aids or HIVS middle market. Um, again, focusing also on regulatory aspects and reimbursement. And then finally, I did not really touch upon this much at all, is another session on Wednesday, two o'clock, um, about financing incentives for R&D and production in Germany. We will talk about some of these programs in much more depth. Yep, here's a quick overview. Uh, tomorrow there will be some German sessions for our uh, colleagues for um, German companies that are interested in international markets. I see something blinking here, but I think that's fine. Um, again, um, as I said at the very beginning, um, some of our services. Again, we provide uh, numbers um, about various markets, um, overviews, trends, so forth, uh, for companies that are interested in entering the German market. Um, uh, we do that in healthcare, but we do that in many other industries as well. Um, we have uh, legal information available, tax information, incentives, financing, basically anything it takes to get up and running um, 
in Germany. We can also, uh, of course, introduce it to local partners, be it um, um, innovation clusters um, or uh, contract manufacturers and so forth. Um, and of course, the one core of our business is also uh, trying to um, help you find ideal location for your business in Germany, whether it be a sales office, headquarter, um, production, research and development um, all across the board. Here are my contact details. If you would like to um, receive the slides, you're more than welcome uh, to uh, send me an email. I will also try to see if there are questions that have come in so far. I see just a few. I think we can cover those pretty quickly. Um, but there may be more coming in. The number of participants is still rising as I see here. So um, one question that I see here is uh, why was Germany not hit as hard as uh, some of the um, as other European countries? That, that's a good question. I don't know. We uh, looked at those numbers um, over the summertime. There was another webinar we did uh, at HIMSS at the uh, Health Information Management System Society in Europe event. Um, and I came to the conclusion that there's not really one thing or anything in particular that you know makes Germany stick out that they've done that no no one else did. Um, uh, I think Germany fared relatively well because there's maybe not a lack of a severe weakness um, in the system. And also, uh, again, keep in mind that uh, there are certainly other countries, um, Taiwan. Um, Korea, many others that have done much, much better. Um, then I see another question coming in. Uh, do you know the name of the five apps cleared with DIGAS? Um, I don't know them out of the top of my head. I have to um, admit, but again, Julia will talk about them um, at 11.20 and she can clearly give you those names as well. How long does the DIGA process take? That's also something um, that Julia will talk about. Again, there's a fast track program. It kind of depends um, whether the medical value is already proven um, or not. Um, also, there's some negotiations involved. So the process um, varies a little bit, but, but uh, Julia will go into the details. Um, another question that I get right now, a number of medical devices and product characters. Yes, we do have those. Um, Again, I couldn't go through all of them in this short period of time. Um, so it depends a little bit, you know, is it a medical device? Uh, is it a Hilfsmittel as, as, as we call it? Um, um, or some, you know, are we talking uh, lab equipment and so forth, but we can we most likely have those numbers or can dig them up for you. Um, Da, 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 dum. Regarding funding, yes, if you have a new device, I need to pull this up a little bit, uh, and you're interested in funding for another device to develop it, uh, again, I, you know, this would be extremely hard to answer uh, um, here um, in just a sentence or two. There's so many options uh, for, um, for funding, um, for research and development. Um, some programs are geared towards collaboration with other companies or, or innovation clusters, research institutes, um, their grant programs, their loan programs um, that um, I suggest you, uh, you attend the um, session on Wednesday that will probably give a much, much better oversight. Um, and also, of course, you're more than welcome to reach out and we can uh, talk about your situation uh, in particular. Will the presentation be available? Yes, I mentioned that at the um, very beginning um, for those who uh, joined later, I'll be happy to make those slides available. Again, you can email me, you see my contact details on the screen. Uh, I'm not sure if it will be available through Medica, but we will also um, upload the presentations, all of the presentations also from the other webinars throughout the week on our website. Um, you see the website right here, gtai.com. And I believe on gtai.com slash medica, you will uh, 
directly go to the page where you will see the presentations later on. Um, I don't have any more questions that I see right now, but I let me scroll down. Yes, you're certainly welcome. <laughs> If that's it, we're a little bit ahead of time. We have a few minutes left, but of course we don't have to go uh, all the way to uh, 10.30. We have a hard stop anyhow. So um, if there are no more questions coming in, I'll just give it another minute. Um, we'll come to an end. Oops, here's some more. Can you put us in contact with distributors is one of the questions. Well, we, um, did put together a list of um, distributors. Um, you know, there's a great number of distributors um, and it's not so easy to match you with the current distributors, but we can give you some hints and some overviews. So it depends a little bit on the product category. Also, if you're looking for a regional partner or a nationwide partner. Um, yeah, but we can certainly help you with that. Um, again, feel free to contact me after the session. Um, yeah, so that's that. Oops, some more coming in. Do you think the German market will manage to catch up in terms of digital healthcare, given that the UK has been working with health apps for years? Um, I certainly hope so. Um, I mean, it's not that there were not health apps in the market in Germany. Uh, so that's not what I what I try to say that for the first time there's a health app, but uh, really that there are health apps that are being prescribed. Um, so that's kind of a change. Um, and that, uh, you know, there's a way to demonstrate that health apps have a benefit and uh, that there's a benefit for health insurance providers as well to prescribe those apps. Um, and um, that it's easy for doctors uh, to work with these apps as well. So there is there is a change. Uh, yes, Germany has not always been on the forefront when it comes to digitalization in the healthcare space. Uh, I don't think, I would never claim that Germany is a front runner um, in general. Um, that's also part because, you know, it's not a national system, it's a self-governing system. Uh, and also it's a fairly large system if you compare it to some other European countries uh, where it's maybe easier uh, to, to introduce to certain measures. With that, we're coming very close uh, to the end. If there is no further questions, I would like to thank you all for joining this presentation today. Um, I hope you have a productive week um, at this virtual medical. It's certainly a first for all of us. Um, um, but I know there are partnering tools, there are webinars, uh, there are many other opportunities uh, to connect. Um, so hopefully you can make the best out of it. Um, and have a productive week. And of course, uh, also wherever you may be, I hope you stay healthy and that we get to see each other again live at another event sometime soon. Thank you very much for joining us today. <laughs>